Uh, the program is moving very quickly, and uh, we're going to break for lunch immediately after this uh, very short presentation. But I would like to introduce uh, Linda Gunsberg, Dr. Linda Gunsberg, and Richard Stevens. Um, Richard Stevens is a freelance historian and journalist living in New York City. Uh, the focus of research is the history of family dismemberment, including representations in film, fiction, with an emphasis on child custody disputes, parental kidnapping, missing children, cults, and parental alienation. And Dr. Linda Gunsberg is a psychotherapist in private practice. She is the chair of the Family Forensics Training Program at Washington Square Institute, New York City, and a forensic expert in matrimonial, civil, and criminal matters. So I'm going to turn the uh, short presentation over to Richard and to Linda. Thank you. The term parental alienation was first publicly used in the summer of 1985. The term was new, but the phenomenon was not. Over the past 180 years, news reports of child custody court cases have frequently contained phrases, phrases such as the following. In 1827 London, the father, in his answer, declared that the plaintiff had endeavored to alienate the affections of the child from him. 1912 Ohio, quote, wife has turned his children against him, unquote. 1914 Montana, quote, divorced man thinks child is influenced against him, unquote. 1916 Connecticut, Quote, child's mind poisoned by mother, he alleges. This is a headline. A whole range of different terms referring to what we presently call parental alienation were used in historical cases. In previous centuries, charges of alienation were, were brought just as frequently by mothers as they were by fathers. For example, in a 1904 case, three variations of older terminology denoting parental alienation were used in newspapers. The New York Times, referring to the child in this case, said the father had inoculated him with hatred towards her and that he had, quote, prejudiced him against her, unquote. And the New York Tribune, reporting the same case, uh, stated the father had, quote, poisoned her child's mind uh, against her, Re referring to the mother. A mother's child. An 1896 short story published in newspapers has this illustration. From the opening of the story, a handsome young woman, showily dressed, started in surprised upon meeting Master John. Master John is this woman's child. The mother had been unwillingly kept from seeing her son for an extended period of time for, from, by her ex-husband. The story goes on to relate how the mother lures the boy into an apartment where she attempts unsuccessfully to re reawaken their lost intimacy. But the boy does not know his mother any longer, and he does not like her. During the mother's agonizing struggle to find her way back into the heart of her beloved little boy, the father barges in with lawyer and policeman in tow. The father takes the boy away and threatens her with imprisonment. The mother ends the controversy and her unbearable sorrow by shooting herself dead. After his divorce in 1917, Mr. Sparks reportedly taught his little daughter to condemn his estranged life, the wife with the words, quote, you are not my mama, the little girl said. Like so many parents subjected to such a strategy of alienation, Mrs. Marie Sparks found the experience unbearable. She drank poison and died from it. The outcome of this case is far from unique in historical records of alienation cases. A parent will sometimes even murder his or her own his or her own child in order to destroy the other parent's bond with the child. Jealousy of the parent-child 
bond by the other parent is the result of the jealous parent feeling eclipsed by the other. 1923, Evansville, Indiana. Ethel Montgomery Crum had repeatedly been prevented by her ex-husband from seeing her daughter, who had been, according to her assertions, deliberately alienated from her by both her ex-husband and her in-laws. Mrs. Crum was eventually awarded a $25,000 court settlement on the grounds of alienation of affections between parent and child. In a 1926 case, a father testified in his child custody hearing that, previous to his divorce, his wife had spitefully threatened to poison his daughter Terry's mind against him. She had told her husband, I am going to teach Terry, Terry to hate every drop of blood in your body. In 1935, the first children's book about parental alienation was published. It tells the story of a father's ultimately successful struggle to overcome the poisoning of his son's mind against him by the maternal aunt who had custody of the boy and who had taught him to hate his own father. These newspaper photos were taken during child custody hearings in a 1941 case. At the right, we see the terrified five-year-old Robert Ware hiding from his mother under a table in the courtroom. Newspaper reports state that the judge in this case accused the father of poisoning the mind of his son against the boy's mother. This remarkable drawing by a nine-year-old boy made while he was staying with his divorced father is part of a letter he wrote to his alienating mother. She had taught her son a simple code with which to write secret messages to her while he was out of her direct physical control. The coded message reads, the hell with my father, I would like it if he died. The mother wrote back to her son, quote, darling Lance, thank you for your very nice letter, which I enjoyed a lot. I got a good laugh out of your code message. You must write me some more like that. After World War II, the phenomenon of parental alienation began to slowly attract the attention of psychiatrists. Dr. Wilhelm Reich, in his 1949 book, Character Analysis, makes a brief but notable mention of the parental motive of, quote, revenge on the partner through robbing him of the pleasure of the child, unquote. 1950, Los Angeles. Here, a maternal grandmother is determined by the court to have alienated her granddaughter from the child's mother during a period when the 10-year-old girl was living with the, maternal aunt, with the maternal grandmother. In her testimony, the alienated parent revealed that when she was a child, she too had been alienated from her father by the same alienator. The photo shows the mother in court trying to comfort the alienated child. Two years later, in another Los Angeles case, an hysterical nine-year-old Marlene Matchen is screaming at her mother, go away, as her alienated grandmother looks on in the courtroom. The judge admonished the grandmother for brutally poisoning the mind of little Marlene against her mother. In 1974, the American Bar Association's nationally syndicated column, The Family Lawyer, described parental alienation before this specific term existed as, quote, poisoning the child's mind. Somewhere Child. This brilliantly written 1980 memoir by Bonnie Lee Black thoroughly describes in excruciating and psychologically insightful detail an extreme case of parental alienation. Here the father, himself a matrimonial lawyer, alienates his daughter from her mother. In 1980, Harold Mimmer, an alienated parent, sued for damages in a Virginia court. The Washington Post reported that, quote, Mimmer alleged that his wife, 
who has remarried twice since their 1976 divorce, had encouraged his daughters not to talk to him, hung up when he called on the telephone, and vilified him in the children's presence. Unquote. In the words of the prosecuting lawyer, the ex-wife had, quote, brainwashed the children about their father, unquote. Based on Mr. Memmer's own testimony and that of a physician, of his physician, a jury of four women and three men awarded him $25,000 damages as compensation for his suffering from severe emotional problems quote, severe emotional problems, unquote, resulting from his ex-wife's deliberate and successful alienation attempts. Although a present controversy exists within the mental health professional community as to whether parental alienation should be considered a psychiatric diagnosis, it is clear that courts have already, in a pre-diagnosis era, understood the harm to parents children, and families from parental alienation as a phenomenon. <clears throat>